Did I fix it? I'm alive. Says we're live, Toby. I just had to turn my computer off and on again. Yes. Okay. Good boy, Toby. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys see me? Welcome, welcome. Hello, Iana Lith and James Allen. And who else is here? I thought I saw us. Just local. Hello. Yay. Okay. Hi. Hi. I'm Felicia, and this is Bruno. And we have Toby here with me, too. They're going to be my helpers today because we're talking costumes. And specifically today, we're going to go into a little depth about doggy costumes. Um, if you guys don't know me, I'm Felicia, but if you're here, you probably do. Um, yeah, so I hope you guys came with lots of questions. I have way more than enough answers, plenty of wrong ones, but it'll still be fun to talk about. So, I brought a hi, Bruno, pile of doggy clothes. This one's not yours, Toby. Pile of doggy costumes so that we can talk about them and how to pattern them. I like this one. I might steal this one from you, Bruno. <laughs> Anyways, I was trying to explain to you guys kind of how you figured out what, where to even start when it comes to, <sighs> what, to figuring out where the dog's costumes belong, so, hi, you want to be my helper? Okay. Well, I suppose we can get your tummy measurement first. So you're going to measure it from the, t from the collar to the bottom of the ribcage, and you're going to take that measurement. Yours is 11, Toby. <laughs> And then from the collar, hey, I need your spine a little straighter than that. Oh, well, I can go around to where you kind of want it to end. You're between 24 and 25. Either will work. And let me see. Here you go. Here is one of Toby. Oh, he knows this one. He likes this. So the two measurements that we just took, we only technically need one of these. So we took his measurement to where we wanted the end of the collar to be. I said about 24, this is 26. But that this is a raincoat, so it covers all the way to his tail. And then the measurement that goes ar around him, you always want to add a little extra because, you know, breathing room, unless it's a stretchy fabric. And that measurement is a little weird to take because it's like you're giving your dog a big hug. Right, Toby? Hi. You go around. And this, and that's this measurement right here. Now, this looks like it's just a rectangle with a big bite taken out of it or a bib. But how you figure out this angle for whether it's this size or Bruno size. right here is it is a right angle where is my right angle oh here we go i have a ruler i have lots of rulers but if you measure from the collar from point to point you get that right angle and so when you're kind of just drawing out a pattern i like to start at the collar draw the line straight down of how long i want it and then from the top of that line, I just do a 45 degree angle. And then I just kind of round off the shape that I want, making sure it goes the circumference around the dog and around the dog. Whether it's big or little, I hope that helps. Bruno saw all the costumes and ran away. And Toby saw all the costumes and was like, yes! So this one looks super complicated, doesn't it? A little tuxedo. It's the cutest little Bruno costume, isn't it? <laughs> It's actually really simple. The collar is a rectangle. There is no curve to it whatsoever. This is that collar to tail knit. Collar to where you want it to end measurement. 
where you get into a little bit of complication is the sleeves. But that's a whole discussion in and of itself is doing sleeves, let alone doggy sleeves. But yeah. Okay, before I go off into more weird doggy costumes, let's see what you guys are saying. Yay, nice to see you, Felicia. Hi, Anala. Um, James Allen, yes, you can hear me. Bob's props. Hi, big Bob's props. Welcome. We see you, um, Yonala. My younger sister has a dog, and I would love to see how to pattern a dog costume as a gift. Yeah. I just found out that one of my friends, she got cat costumes. <laughs> I'm so excited. They're going to do Animal Crossing for Halloween. So she got them the little the Timmy and Tommy shirts. And she's going to be Isabel. And I think there's going to be a Tom Nook too. So I thought that was an adorable idea. Um, yeah, I still want to make Bruno Stray, the cat from Stray. Um, I do have a cat. And I do plan on making my cat that backpack. But my cat's all black and... It'll just look like a void with a black. It'll look like a void with a void. So I was thinking of making him uh, batlings for for Halloween because those are adorable, especially on him. Anyways, yeah, those are the only two costumes I have figured out so far. But I like costumes. So, hi Bruno, come here. I check Bruno. Ha, got him. Now I got my little helper. You're a little easier to measure. Oh, don't be shy. Toby, don't be jealous. Don't push the camera. Okay. So. Here. Come here, Bruno. Where is it? I don't know. All right, it fell behind the couch. He is going to spend the rest of the stream trying to get down there. My bad. And he will bark for it, too. Yep. The little. T -t -t -t. He won't rest. He is one determined dog. Bruno, let me just... Come here. Oh, come here, Bruno. Come on. Come here, Bruno. That was my bad. I really shouldn't have thrown that back there. I thought, I didn't realize the couch was away from the wall. Okay. Hi. All right. Okay, guys. Chill. Okay. So, the... Measurements I need from Bruno. Can you? Perfect. That's such a good boy. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. <sighs> I thought herding cats was hard. Apparently Bruno and Toby... Toby was a good boy. I'm sorry, Toby. He gave me that look like, uh-uh-uh, don't. Anyways. Anyways, the measurement from Bruno's collar to back is about 16, and this is about 16. And like I told you, this collar is just a rectangle. How we figure out this angle of where this needs to go, that is our 45-degree angle from our collar, but you go the other way because it's going to go round because you have the rest of this to go to. I feel like I'm making it more confusing now. Okay. Th 
this is a straight line, this is a straight line. We'll even divide it in half. These are straight lines. This is our neck measurement, his collar measurement. This is our collar to before tail measurement, collar to tail measurement. This is his little tummy circumference here. And then this measurement is from collar to where you want it to end. So it's rectangles. It's the collar, the collar to tail, his circumference, and collar to rib cage, end of rib cage, because you don't really want them peeing on it. And then you just kind of curve it in. And I, we get complicated when we get to the sleeve. They have a line right here for a little fold over, right where that sleeve is. But it's just a circle and it's leaned forward. So that measurement, when you want to put a sleeve in, is to figure out what you want that circle to be or where you want it to be, is from shoulder to shoulder. Bruno is eight inches from shoulder to shoulder. And from this shoulder to center seam is four inches. So. And then trying to figure out the circumference for doggy arms can be tricky because Toby's very buff. He has very big arms. Like, I think that's the hardest part about finding things that fit him because his little doggy arms don't fit in little tiny armholes. So he, he really needs it to be a lot. His, I think, shoulder to shoulder. Toby, come here, is only a little bit more than Bruno's because he's, because of where, his, how his shoulders move. Okay, his is about 12, but if Bruno's is eight, it's still like, not, like for being big difference in size dogs, it, I feel like that's a big difference in measurements. But yes, this is a Toby's size sweater. And see how big his armholes are. And this is also a simple rectangle where you have your collar measurement, your collar to tail, and then collar to rib cage, and shoulder to shoulder to figure out where to put the armholes. And then armpit to armpit to figure out how wide to put this little piece. Doggy costumes are really simply complicated, but that's a lot of things. <laughs> Yay, Bruno! And yes, Bruno is Bruno. There is no unbrunoing Bruno. Um, oh, good. Yonela says, I'm making complete sense. And sorry, I was talking with my dad about dinner. I hope you have something delicious. I like enchiladas. James Allen, I'm making clothes for my puppet. Awesome. That is a weird, tricky thing to do. I had to do puppet costumes before. I've been hired to do that. Um, on Smosh, actually, for Ian and Anthony. And a few other weird projects, too. Um, but I remember I was shopping in the... At Babies R Us. Because they have the best little kid grown-up clothing like little tuxedos little suits <laughs> you know all the complicated stuff that you really don't want to make the tiny details I was super impressed because they had like grown-up baby clothes which were puppet size they were the 24 months was the size of the you know the puppet packs that you can get at Toys R Us the Jim Henson ones where you get the basic blank puppet fits those so that was it. That was a fun project. It was a weird one, but it was a fun one. I got to make Jenna Marbles dogs out of puppets, in puppets too. They were cute, all stuffies. Um, ooh, Carl's Juniors for dinner. I like the famous star. Like, it's a classic. <sighs> yes. 
So, um, I saw in the comments from the other stream that I did that people had mentioned um, some characters. One in particular, which was Cyrano. Uh, anyways, it was... Cyrano Jones jacket from Star Trek. Now, I looked up the Cyrano Jones jacket, and it's from the old Star Trek. I used to watch those all the time. My dad had the whole VHS collection, so I would just go slip in a couple episodes. Well, I was bored. Oh, no, Toby, all done. Come here. All done. Bruno can't hear me, and Bruno is Bruno. But this is one of those characters he appears in the um, cartoon also. He has very wide shoulders with pockets on both sides and then big giant pockets in the front and the back. And it's a basic um, jacket, tunic. And he was asking kind of where, what kind of a pattern to start with. And I think you can start with any jacket or rope pattern. You don't really need the whole pattern. What you're really trying to get is you're trying to get the armhole. Because if you take any pattern set, any basic pattern block, and you measure from here to where you want it to end, his has a very wide shoulder. You just take the armhole of the pattern and measure the shoulder to till you have a nice wide shoulder. And then you measure from your shoulder point, which is gonna it's gonna hit you right here. And you're gonna measure to where you want it to hit the V-neck. And Go up an inch because you can always cut it down and it'll always feel lower than you want. But you go from this point to the center front to make a V-neck. And then you draw straight down till you want it to end. And then you draw this seam down till you want it to end. This seam slightly higher. Curve it down to the end. Keep the armhole and sleeve pattern. And throw away all the facings because they're not going to work at this point because we changed the front and we changed the shape of everything else. So just do a lining of the same, cut this out four times. One, two, three, four, and four for the backs. And so you can do a lining and an outside fabric. And then you'll have the armhole already figured out and that's the only tricky part for that. So I would say start with any pattern that is the right size for you with the big oversized armhole. Cause yeah, that's where all your patterning trickery is gonna get and the pattern's already figured out that hard part. The, the drawing a wider shoulder and a neckline and then just straight down and straight down rectangles at that point. And then he's wearing a Santa belt. It is a Santa belt. We had that one at the costume shop. It's not the four inch buckle, it's the two inch buckle version. You can probably order that easily on Amazon. And then as far as the pockets go, you gotta go for scale for you. Um, my shoulder measurement, the widest I can stretch it out is about five inches, so I would probably do about five or six inch um, rectangles. And then it's about a one inch. What would that piece be called? Well, there's a piece that between the um, pocket and your garment, and it's a rectangle, and I would do it about an inch at the most because those pockets will pop out pretty nicely and then it's a flap to go over it. And those same pocket patterns you would have to repeat one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You'd make eight pockets total and it's the same pocket over and over again. So that is a random Star Trek character that was fun to break down. <laughs> and um, yeah, if anybody's wondering, it was Cyrano Jones. And, oh, after the v-neck, it's just a straight piece of orange stripe fabric that I you could just take a rectangle and pin from um, lapel to lapel, you know, just on the inside, wear it as a dickie. Or I wouldn't do a t-shirt because it's definitely not a t-shirt that he's wearing. It's just a straight line that cuts across. Um, but that character was Cyrano Jones from Star Trek. Okay, what are people saying? Because I noticed this thing is moving. 
Yay, I'm reducing some baby clothes to fit my puppet. Funny thing is, my puppet is not even done. Well, I feel like you can get clothes going. It's inspiration. And are they ever finished? Honestly, I rip them apart and put them back together all the time, especially if they have the Velcro, interchangeable pieces. I can make my own eyeballs out of the um, spoons. Eonolith, you mean the guy with the big nose, Cyrano? Yeah, <laughs> I think that's probably what they named him after. Ralph Mork, wow, didn't expect to see you go live. Yeah, I know I had some technical difficulties in the beginning. Um, Eonolith, thanks for showing the pattern because I've always wanted my own tunic. Yeah, honestly, with patterns, it's the shoulder seam that's the hardest. So if you can find a basic dress pattern, t-shirt, you can take your own t-shirt, but it's the, sh the sleeve pattern that if you can get them to do that weird curve work for you. Yeah. Okay. Eonolith, you can buy polyfill from Michaels for under $10 and get a ton of it because I wanted to make some plushies. James Allen, everyone's seen what I've done on Discord. Does that mean... Which one was... Hmm. Oh, those were the puppets. Sorry, I was trying to think which puppet. Anyways, yes, okay. Yes, on the Odin Lives Discord, you can um, see James Allen's work because we're all on there. So I've blabbered on about some random character costume that you guys don't even know what anything about. Is there any characters or costume questions that you guys have for me? And I think there may have been like one other question. That there was a character from last week. It was from the Bad Batch. It was that one character that had the green tunic. And I was laughing because I know exactly where to find that tunic at Decades. We had a leather one, well, a suede and leather one. That would have been perfect. But we purchased that one from a certain brand. And if you can still find that brand, they still make clothing. They typically make pirate shirts. This sourcing I haven't done in a while. But being able to label things really helps. And different companies have different licensing agreements um, for which characters they can make and which characters they can make. Like, I think Ruby's has a lot of the Marvel characters or DC, you know, like the different brands own the ability to make the costumes for them. And then within that brand, they have the different price points of the $400 costume, the $50 costume, the $20 costume, and the children's versions of the different things. And ah, this time of year, I used to go shopping for all those. What's going to be this year's biggest costume? What movie was big? What is everyone going to be asking for? What do you guys think that this is going to be this year's Halloween costume? Honestly, at Comic-Con, I saw a lot of Demon Slayer costumes. So I think there's going to be a lot of Demon Slayer this year. I really do. I think that's what the, kid, what the kids want, <laughs> as James would say, because he's like, I don't know. What do the kids want these days? But. But yeah, what would be some fun Halloween costumes this year? Hello, Strict David. And... Oh, Hunter from the Leader of the Bad Batch. Yeah, I liked his outfit. His outfit was really clean. It was a nice... I swear, I wish I knew that brand, because... There's this one dance company who makes a lot of dance costume, Got dance costumes, like dance apparel. They did a line of costumes one year, and those things were the best quality. <laughs> and some of my favorite pieces that fit, like, the most body types, believe it or not, too. They were, like, the best. And it's not charades. I'm seriously blanking. There is a pirate renaissance brand 
I will have to look it up and then I will let you guys know what that brand is so that you can find their jackets. But, but yeah, that's a green, um, suede tunic. I would call it a shirt waist pirate vest or ren vest in order to find kind of the right terminology to find something within that style on Amazon. But, and then he has a red bandana. Those are easy enough to find. You can use red fabric and a nice, it's the patch that you can really have some fun with. Because you can do that patch in all sorts of different ways, whether you wanted to do it as a patch or as just a drawing. You can even print it out on fabric. You could shrink a dink it so that it's a little bit of a harder plastic. Oh, look at me being super professional with my phone going off. Shh, that didn't happen. Anyways, back to the bad batch. But I feel like that's a really nice, fun costume because it's a pair of comfy pants, some boots, and um, it's getting that vest right, or close enough. But, yeah. Oh, nice. James Allen says, I craft things out of a lot of media. I crochet and have done a lot of bumblebees. I've crocheted too when I've needed to. Knit w knitted when I needed to. I prefer to crochet, but I feel like it uses way more fabric yarn than knitting. Um, well, Iana List says, well, how good... Given how Disney Plus has really been streaming a lot, I could see a ton of Marvel and Star Wars. Maybe they would make a great family costume. Marvel superheroes are a given. Those costumes are... Spider-Man's always going to be fun to be for Halloween. I don't think there's been a Halloween that we haven't rented Spider-Man at least once, twice, three times. You know, we had multiples. Superman 2. You know, a good Superman movie hasn't been out in a while, and we still do good with Superman. Because a lot of people have Halloween parties or just superhero parties in general. And then people are like, all right, but I want to be something other than Superman, Spider-Man. And then you, that's when you start to get into, like, the Incredibles, just to throw a curveball in there. Or, you know, just go comfortable, be Tony Stark and just do a push light in your t-shirt. <laughs> but, yeah. Disney princesses and superheroes. Not even just Disney princesses, but princesses and superheroes are very classic and never going to go out of style. Now, which superhero is going to be the most popular? That always kind of fluctuates, but Batman, Superman, and Spider-Man, no matter what movies are out, are, <laughs> are very popular within the la for the last 10, 15 years at least, from my experience. Oh, it reminds you of Monday live stream, but we don't got Odin here. It's just me. Um, what didn't happen? I don't know. Rob Morgan, I just googled images for pirate renaissance costume brands. Some of the stuff looks amazing. Yeah, it's those pirate shirts. You get a good gauze shirt. You can use that for everything. There's so many costumes you can do with just a good pirate shirt. Um. I like a black one and a white one, because the black one, then you could do Zorro and all the dark, darker characters. With the white one, you can do all, yeah, men's costuming, pirate shirt, pirate shirt. But I don't want to be a pirate. That's what I always think of Seinfeld. Um, Maker Bates, I just love how I didn't get the notification. Hello, all. I'm sorry I had a little bit of a rough start getting going, but I'm here. We're, we're talking. We're trying to decide what's going to be the popular costume this year for Halloween. What are we going to see? I think we've seen enough little Elsas running around. What do you see? What do you think it's going to be? I really think it... Those little butterfly girls from Demon Slayer, I swear. I mean, it's going to see butterflies all over for Halloween. 
That's my prediction. We'll see if it's true. <laughs> Strict David. I want to be a pirate, right? It's Ren Fair season. It's pirate time. Yeah. A good Ren shirt, peasant blouse. Comfortable Ren pants, which are pajama pants. Yep. Pirates. They're always a comfortable, easy, cool costume. And you get a sword. My, Maker Bates. My son wants to be Black Panther, but he wants the retractable claws. And I don't know how to pull that off yet. Ooh, rubber bands. Yeah. Let me just pull up Black Panther's paw real quick so that I can give you better information. Ooh, they're on. That's awesome. Okay, so let me look at his little, at the glove real quick. Where? There you guys are. Sorry, you guys get to look at me look up stuff. Um, so you're, first of all, you got gloves to work with. So yes. Second of all, you got silver. You get to put the stuff on top because it's all on top of the glove. So even easier. And then from there, you kind of want to have a... So the way your tendons work in your hand is there's no muscles in your hands. The muscles are down here, and these are rubber bands that pull. And if you think of that concept, you can extend that concept to other rubber bands that pull. Um... I like to do anchor points so that you can thread the string from the fingertip through to your hand with the claw. And then when you bend it, it pulls it back. <sighs> retractable. Do you want them retractable like when you straighten your hand or when you bend your hand? Because that would require different mechanics. Because... Hold on, let me look at his thing. At his hands. Okay, I'm seeing the ones that are on the knuckles, and I'm seeing the ones that are on the fingertips. Which ones is the ones he wants? Yonolith. I would use elastic instead. Rubber bands, elastic, stretchy stuff. The... Technicalities doesn't matter because you can use the necklace beading string. It's that little thin elastic. And that would be easy to thread through and bend and stretch and pull on your mechanics. Um, not baits. Bats. Maker bats. Sorry. Maker bats. Um, so... Yeah, you could do silver straws with the elastic threaded through, anchored at the wrist, and it do the retractable motion from there. Yeah. I'll have to think about, because then you could do it where it pull, so you uh, have the claw, the thing would push it forward as you pull it, so that you could shh. This makes sense in my head. And by the way, there is a kitty cat sitting next to me. He just looks like a void. This is spooky. He is darkness. Ionalith, we need a diagram of his claws. Yes, yes we do. I would print out a picture and then kind of decide from there. Because I believe they made it semi-practical at one point, or were intending to. So, diagram, but yes, I can. I'll look more into it. Hi, you. I want Guybrush Threepwood costume. 
Let me look that up and I can give you my two cents on it. Let's see. Sorry, spooky. Go back to the darkness. Oh, another pirate! We had this costume in decades. I could totally walk you through and get you that costume. Okay, so... I wish I could run to decades, not run to decades, but go run down and look at that. There are revolutionary war jackets that some brand makes here in the United States that you can get the, um, they come in red and they come in blue because it's like, which side are you on kind of a thing. They have the wide pirate cuffs and they have the uh, white band lapels with the little, with the military striping on them and then you put the fancy shoulders on, that kind of style jacket. They have a blue one and they have a red one. And I feel like you can modify one of those. But if you... Yeah, Ren shirt, Ren, those skin brown Ren pants. The pirate boots, you would look up the term pirate boots. They have them in brown and they have them in black. I wouldn't... I and they might have them in red. Um, is it Pleasers brand? I know they have like some of the best costume shoe selection. They're, and I think they had the pirate boots. Or it could be Ruby's. Ruby's had a really good pirate boot with the fold over. But theirs only came in black and brown. You'd have to paint them red if you wanted them red. And then if you wanted to make that jacket, I would still go about with finding a jacket pattern that already has your sleeve and armhole figured out, you know, and then just straightening down to make your jacket. And then you would do a white look. Well, no, theirs isn't white. The revolutionary one's white. His is red. Yeah. And it looks like it has wooden button, wooden toggle buttons down. And I absolutely love the pirate cuffs. I used to make those pirate cuffs all the time at Decades. We would attach them to jackets to turn them into cool pirate jackets. And you know what we used to make them? We would use bleach bottles. Specifically bleach bottles. Because that plastic could withstand the washing and the drying. It can go through the washer. It could go through the dryer. It can get sewn through. You can stitch through it on the sewing machine. You need a heavy-duty needle, but it's soft enough to stitch through. And it made the best size clean collar cuffs. And we would make them at least like six to nine inches. And we would cover them in fabric. And I just hand stitch it to the jacket wrist. And those were our pirate cuffs. They were the best pirate cuffs. James still swears by it today. He saves all his bleach bottles specifically because <laughs> he would turn them into pirate cuffs. That's like the best plastic to put inside of clothing. Shh, it's a secret. Um, Master, Ma Master Masks. I'm going to say Mr. Masks. It says Hocus Pocus 2, Roombas on the feet. 3D print maybe? <gasps> Ooh. Well, could you find thrift store Roombas? See, Roombas has the thing where they were giving out cheap Roombas, but it was with the pres prescription subscription service. So people were getting rid of their Roombas because they because they were kind of. Anyways, I've seen like two or three at the thrift store. That one might not be in like out of. The realm of possibilities but you're looking for more just kind of trying to get that disc shape i wouldn't stress out about 3d printing it so that you have replica roombas but i want to see that hocus pocus i'm so excited about that movie my friend 
she dressed up as all three of the the Sanderson sisters, and so she has like the all the heads. So she looks like a three headed beast, and she's all the Sanderson sisters. It is amazing. Her name is Jody Collins. If you wanted to look her up on Instagram, I think that's where it's on. But Hocus Pocus two, Hocus Pocus two, Roomba. Let's look at the Roomba meme. You know what I would do? I would wear roller skates. I would wear roller skates with discs around my thing. I have the balance for that. And I like having an excuse to wear roller skates as part of my costume in general. But I think it's just trying to get the disc shapes. But you could totally make that out of foam. That is completely something that's a clean circle. That's a clean. Yeah, but there's a million ways to do anything wrong. Um, I would use elastic instead. Elastic's very good. Um, I know the concept fingertips. Okay, good. My main issues is what materials to use so that it slides easy. Um, plastic straws. Cover your plastic straws. It's silver, you know, like just give yourself a tube for it to slide through. I hope that, you know, elastic and, and thread it through. Give yourself like either a tube or, um, in Roman blinds, they just use little loops that things are connected to. So stress points, but yeah. You want to look, can I post this link or no? I don't know. I haven't set any restrictions. So, if you can't, it's not because I didn't say you could. Um, ooh, I'm looking to make Star Trek Wrath of Khan radiation suit. Let me Google that to see what it looks like because I like that. Let me... Ooh, is it the white one? Okay. Let me pull up the image. That looks like it is pure vinyl. 1960s vinyl at its finest. You got quilting. And looks like they did a double top stitch. That's a washer. Okay. Let me go back to you guys. Okay, so that suit looks like fun. That looks like it's purely out of white vinyl. Very, very 70s. I like that they did the quilting, and it looks like they sewed over, um, I want to say insulation, like the tubing insulation. You, you can get like the half dowels or the full dowels or you can cut them in half and just use that for all the, that detail. And then it looks like he has a double stitching around the big placket. You can make that as a piece with the circles layered on top as three different circles. Or if you wanted to do it, you could do it with the circle technique of the other one, but it looks like they did three quilted circles. And it looks like there's a washer on it, on his collar. That one looks like a fun one. And then on the top, the black part, I would do out of foam. Yeah, to really give it that 3D look. And um, I found out from Odin that his favorite YouTuber, where, who's his favorite YouTuber? He always goes, go to this guy's page, Ted, Evil Ted. Evil Ted has a truncated cone pattern or a cone figure outer. So you just need to put in what your measurement you want at the top to be and the what your measurement you want it to be at the bottom. And then it gives you the pattern. So Evil Ted's channel has a 
really good trunk link to a really good truncated cone pattern. And I learned that from Odin because that's where he goes every time I need some kind of a cone pattern. Although the last time I needed a cone pattern, I had to figure it out on my own because it was complicated. But I tried. So I would do it out of foam, but, but that one looks like a fun one. Oh my goodness, Ralph Mork, it's 2.30 a.m., go to bed. Yes. All right, it has been 45 minutes. If you guys have any last minute questions, otherwise I think I'm gonna call it a day too. All right, Iana Lith is gonna go get her food. Um, I think only mods are allowed to post links, at least that's what I heard from another channel. Okay. Yes. All right. I have no mods. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and ask them now. But I'm going to be back again next week for all your guys' random Halloween or costume questions. We, I will probably come back with a few better answers about retractable claws because now I'm curious and that's always a good way to learn. And... Um, feel free to list characters that you want me to break down and I'll look them up. And if you do it before next stream, I possibly can print them out so you guys could see what I'm talking about and or figure out how to post it. Um, but there are no other questions. I will see you guys next week. And let's go for Thursday next week. And we'll see how that works. So until next time, there's a million ways to do anything wrong. I just know a few of them. Bye. Yes, I want to end the stream.